have a look at the latest business headlines now with Matthew Warren. Matthew, uh, the big question, of course, looking ahead to today will be uh, the U.S. Central Bank and whether or not it's going to start cutting back on its stimulus program. That's uh, right, Melissa. The Federal Reserve currently buying $85 billion worth of bonds every month. The reason for that, it's an effort to boost the economy effectively by reducing interest rates and stimulate things, particularly the housing market. Well, we've known for a while that uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke plans to phase it out. In fact, he said that when unemployment gets down to 7% in the US. He doesn't want to see the Fed buying any bonds at all. Well, let's have a look at what's been happening to unemployment in the US. It's been falling, as you can see, for some time. That's where it is right now, 7.3%. So there's wide expectation that this tapering will start. We won't know for sure until 2.30pm uh, US time on the East Coast. That, of course, 830 p.m. Uh, here in Paris. Well, investors generally been a bit cautious ahead of that, but uh, we're just seeing some gains now on the Asian markets that are open this Wednesday. South Korean Kospi is uh, South Korean market is closed, but otherwise they're all just about flat or making some gains. The Nikkei was up about uh, 1% a bit uh, earlier. There you can see what's happening. Here in France, Matthew, we're expecting more job cuts to be announced at Air France KLM today. Yes, that's right. The airline wants to save €2 billion Euros over three years. And uh, it's already said that it's going to cut an extra 2,600 jobs and they'll be giving more details to unions today. Now, that's on top of 5,600 job cuts that have been made over the last two years. That's taken the total workforce down to just over 100,000 uh, so, and it's uh, expected, of course, if they do make these 2,600 job cuts, it will go even below that. Well, meanwhile, while the airline is cutting jobs, it's uh, investing more in its business class services. Stephen Carroll has been taking a look. It's the new battleground for airlines competing for the top tier passengers. We decided to keep this upper level 100% business class. Here we have 86 seats. Each of those seats has a widescreen TV with 1,400 programs available to watch. There's also a mirror and, most importantly, space. You'll notice the seat is extremely large, 86 centimetres wide. It's the most spacious on the market. The leather seats cost Singapore Airlines around €40,000 each. They also convert into two-metre-long beds. Business class only accounts for around 20% of seats on flights, but it generates 40% of the revenue from ticket sales. The average cost of a return trip in business from Paris to Singapore is €4,000. For that price, passengers can afford to be demanding. I want to be able to work in a pleasant space. A comfortable seat and to be able to lie down. On the ground, too, the competition is fierce. In this Air France lounge at Paris's Charles de Gaulle airport, meals and newspapers are free. There's even somewhere to get a massage or have a shower. Despite cutting costs elsewhere, the French carrier is going the extra mile for its top paying customers. In 2014, Air France is to spend 1.6 million euros a day improving its business class facilities. Well, now staying here in uh, Europe, Matthew, two countries uh, are getting visits from their creditors this week. That's right, two countries that got loans from the IMF and the Eurozone. The first, Greece, as you've been reporting today, of course, uh, the Troika is there inspecting and public sector workers, as we can see here, out on strike. More of them joining today over these uh, job cuts and spending squeezes. The other country, Portugal, they got a 78 billion euro bailout as well. Could be a more difficult uh, visit for the creditors there. There's a new deputy prime minister in post, Paolo Portas, and he's already said that he wants to see the Troika ease back a little bit, increase this deficit target they're supposed to reach from 4% to 4.5% for next year. And they've already said that uh, they are not likely to uh, do that. Meanwhile, the borrowing costs for Portugal have been rising, as you can see here, over 7%. Investors clearly a bit nervous. Well, meanwhile, representatives of both workers and bosses met the inspectors who are there on Tuesday. Neither side seemed very impressed with that meeting. Let's take a listen. 
This meeting was a surreal meeting. The Troika's representatives registered all those questions, but they said they couldn't talk about them because they'd just arrived in Portugal. So what we saw today was a farce. We found the silence strange. They were just listening and didn't answer the question we asked. There is too much prudence. The moment we are living in is an emergency. It's necessary to quickly change part of the adjustment program. Well, that was a look, Matthew, of the latest business headlines. Thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, this morning, uh, 22 minutes past eight here in Paris time, for a look at web news. In a statement released in the wake of Monday's shooting at a naval facility in Washington, D.C., Democrat Senator Dianne Feinstein has asked, when will enough be enough? Other members of Congress have joined her in calling for tighter gun control and are trying to bring this issue back to the debating table. As countless web users have been saying, this is now more important than ever before. Many have taken to social networks to express their sympathy with victims' loved ones, as well as share their frustrations over ongoing gun violence and recurrent shootings. Calls for stricter firearm legislation have been multiplying on the web, measures deemed all the more crucial, given the suspected gunman at the Washington Navy Yard, Erin Alexis, had displayed violent behaviour and outbursts in the past and had notably been arrested in Texas in 2010 after discharging his firearm by firing bullets through his ceiling. Others are saying this tragedy proves the background checks advocated by certain lawmakers to determine that someone's eligibility to purchase a firearm are ineffective. Erin Alexis had a valid access pass for entry entering the U.S. Navy Yard complex, despite having been investigated by the federal authorities. And some, like Robert Zimmerman, brother of George Zimmerman, who was recently acquitted of the murder of a black teenager in Florida, have remarked that Washington already has very strict gun laws, but this didn't prevent Monday's shooting. <laughs> Thousands of web users in South Africa are campaigning in support of 23-year-old lorry driver Sonelli May. Ten days ago, the truck he was driving in the city of Pinetown on the outskirts of Durban collided into several other vehicles claiming numerous victims. The truck driver is soon to appear in court on charges of murder and reckless driving, charges many have called into question. 14,000 people have signed this online petition, urging South Africa's judicial authorities to carry out a thorough investigation into the horrific accident and not make Sonelli May the scapegoat. Web users are saying the heavy goods vehicle he was driving was in very poor condition, and the company that employed him, Sajika Logistics, should also be held responsible in some way for the pileup. A Facebook support group has been set up for the truck driver and has over 7,600 members, all urging South Africans to reserve judgment until all the facts are in and have some compassion for the driver, who is said to be highly traumatized by what's happened. Strong mobilization, but it won't be easy to convince the authorities, however, as they have made road safety something of a national cause. South Africa does have a high rate of road fatalities. According to a recent report, around 38 lives are lost every day. Nina Davuluri, who was crowned Miss America 2014 at Sunday's ceremony in Atlantic City, has been given a mixed reception on social networks. The student, who is from New York and of Indian heritage, has had to contend with a deluge of racist remarks on Twitter, some even saying she looks like a terrorist. Hateful, offensive, cliché-laden comments that have drawn strong criticism from American web users, who have hailed the jury's decision, saying it reflects the nation's cultural diversity. <laughs> This Tumblr blog entitled Men Taking Up Too Much Space on the Train collects photos of men doing just that on the subway, on the bus and on other means of public transport. The author of the blog says it shows how contrary to women, men feel totally empowered to take up a lot of public space. In honour of the latest instalment of the Star Trek saga being released on DVD, a British video-on-demand platform decided to trick passers-by at a shopping centre into believing scientists had invented a teleportation machine. And with the help of some fake customers who were in on the act, they left other shoppers stunned. Check out the video in its entirety on all good video-sharing platforms.
you see her, please do shout out. Where? 27 minutes past eight. Coming up, we're going to be looking at the very latest protests to rock Greece, rising unemployment, a lack of economic growth and more uh, austerity are, is, are moving public sector workers to take the streets once again. In Asia Live, we'll be looking at Afghanistan's next presidential elections as the nomination process opens. That's in just a moment.